this lecture, we're going to be talking about probability terminology. Now, before we begin, I want to emphasize the difference between probability and statistics. Now, statistics is the study of analyzing data, whereas data is the um, like a snapshot of the current present time. So I like to think about statistics as like the study of the now, whereas probability is about making predictions. It's the study of the future. It's using information to predict what will happen. Now, these two areas of mathematics, they overlap quite dramatically. And in this course, we're going to be using both. But that being said, there are terms within each camp of mathematics. And so I want to go over some terminology and probability. Now, so let's take a look at the OpenStax textbook. Um, probability is a measure that is associated with how certain we are of outcomes of a particular experiment or activity. Basically, the, prob the likelihood of that something is going to happen. An experiment is a planned operation carried out under controlled conditions. Now, that sounds a lot like an experiment that we've defined in statistics, and so those terms um, mean the same thing in both areas of mathematics. If the result is not predictable, is not predetermined, sorry, then the experiment is said to be a chance experiment. Now, we can think about a chance experiment as, as very synonymous to random variable in statistics. So if you remember, a random variable is any variable in statistics, or if you grab anything from your sample, it's impossible to predict the observation of that thing that you pulled out of your sample. That's very similar to chance experiment. Now, a result of an experiment is called an outcome. So I actually have a fair-sided coin here. Um, there are two sides, heads and tails. And if I flip it, there are only two possible outcomes, heads and tails. It's actually not correct. Um, I could actually get it to land on its side. And if you haven't, if you've seen the Vsauce video for what is random, or maybe it's what is not random, one of the two, um, he talks about how a nickel can land on its side one in every 3,000 flips. And that's actually true. Um, now, that being said, uh, when we talk about probability in this class, we're going to be talking about rele rele relevant outcomes. So we're only going to be talking about relevant outcomes. In this case, there are only two relevant outcomes landing on its um, heads or tails. Now, that being said, a sample space of an experiment is the set of all possible outcomes. So with a quarter, it's heads and tails. With a die, it's landing a one, two, three, four, five, or six. Now, um, in this class, we're going to be talking about probability rectangles. Probability rectangles are really, really amazing ways of understanding probability. Um, I believe that when people use like Venn diagrams or tree diagrams or when they list up all the possible outcomes, um, it can get really confusing on how to calculate probabilities. But we're going to make cal calculating probability like a piece of cake in this, in this course. Um, that being said, an event is any combination of outcomes. So, for example, um, if I flip this coin three times, an event could be that I um, uh, I get at most two heads. That's an event. It's a combination of outcomes. So if you like to think about it, if you're familiar with set theory, you could think of an event as a subspace or a subset of your sample space. Now, that being said, we actually write probabilities of events as this with no, with this notation typically we would write p parentheses and then something and this basic this entire thing represents the probability of that event happening and so that's where you would stick your event and when you, if you put p parentheses and close that event with parentheses that basically means that you're taking you're calculating the probability that that event will occur we'll see that throughout this course the probability of an any outcome is the long-term relative frequency of that outcome. What the heck does that mean? Well, let me explain that um, using this quarter. Now, you would like to think that this quarter is 50-50, but it's actually not. Um, if I flip this coin, let's say, a thousand times, you'll probably notice that around 51% of the time, you're going to land a heads, and 49% of the time, you're going to land a tails. So if you want to know the probability of, of flipping a heads, you'd actually have to flip this coin millions and millions and millions of times and then determine using those, um, those uh, experiments, you're going to have to calculate how what portion of them did you land a heads. 
Now, is are millions and millions and millions of flips enough? Technically, the answer is no. However, in this class, it's good enough. Uh, I wouldn't ask you to actually flip a quarter millions and millions of times. Typically, around a hundred or a thousand, you get a pretty decent um, understanding of how this coin works. But I would argue that it's not completely fifty-fifty, and it's not. And so uh, that's what it means when it says the probability of any outcome is the long-term relative frequency that uh, of that outcome. Um, long-term meaning literally forever. <laughs> so you'd have to be flipping this coin forever. And that's not possible. So is it possible to figure out the probability of any event? No. That's weird. But anyways, thank you guys so much. And I'll see you guys in the next lecture.